Uh, we welcome the internet. Today we're going to be talking about Abraham in the eyes of Paul and the eyes of James. as written uh, and some other things. We'll just see how it goes. But anyway, in Romans chapter 4, the Apostle Paul, our Apostle, says in verse 1, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, is found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay? Now, look at Genesis 15. Genesis 15. And he still named Abram here. Uh, verse 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and <clears throat> thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth, uh, he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Now, verse 8, uh, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So when did the Lord count it to him for righteousness? And what did he believe? He said, look at the stars and thy seed. And then you understand, this man is childless, and all he has is Eliezer, which Eliezer is just a servant, a steward in the house. And so God has told him here, you're going to have men. And Abraham believed God. Abram believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. Okay. Now, that is a spiritual promise from God. A spiritual promise being that he hadn't even seen it. And we look at Abraham in his life. And I, 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 maybe I can get it over to you in a minute. But I want you to turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, they call it the Hall of Faith. And of course, there's quite a bit of mention of, of Abraham here in Hebrews 11. Now you understand, <clears throat> we're not out of Abraham. We're out of Noah. Abraham and all that. I mean, there's, it all the way goes back all the way to God. Uh, Abraham is after the flood. We come out of Japheth. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. We come out of Japheth. Abraham comes out of Shem. Okay. So our genealogy is different than Abraham. But Paul talks about the spirituality of Abraham, our father. And he's, of course, he's referring to the fact that, yes, Abraham is Paul's father because he's an a Israelite. And we'd have to go through the genealogies of Genesis 15 and 17 and on and on. We understand that Jacob is named Israel. Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. Abraham had Isaac and Jacob. He had two sons. And what's amazing is Ishmael had 12 tribes also. And you understand the eastern problem is between these tribes. You got 12 tribes of Ishmael. You got 12 tribes of Israel. And they fight all the time. We over in America, we go over there trying to straighten out a family affair. You better get out of there. Because they ain't going to like you. They don't want nothing to do with it. They're busy fighting each other. And we're sticking our nose over there. We ought not be over there because why would we go over there? Well, it's oil and my love of money and uh, power and everything else. But this between two men, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael is a legitimate son of Abraham. He's just not the promised son. It's the work of the flesh. You understand it? We get, I don't know if we'll get into that, but you, you got to understand this, this problem ain't going to be settled by us. 
It'll only be settled when God settles it. Okay? And you know, isn't it funny? They fight over Jerusalem. You ever look how little Jerusalem is in the scheme of things? It's just a little strip along there, and they all want it. And God won't give it to anybody yet. That's what's funny. He won't give it to any of them. They fight, and they wrestle, and they haggle, and they fight over it. <clears throat> but Paul says some things we'll get to in a minute about Ishmael and Isaac. But now turn with me to Hebrews 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Now let's set the stage for this. God said, you're going to have a son. Well, he said, I got Eleazar. I mean, my seed, you're going to have a seed. going to be great. I guess my steward of my house will be my son. I don't have anything. No, you're going to, out of your own bowels, you're going to have a son. So in Genesis, uh, the next chapter where we're reading, in Genesis 16, Sarai says, take my concubine. I can't, I, I guess I'm not going to have it. Just take my concubine, Agar. Abraham hearkens unto her. Now listen, folks. He didn't wait on God. Put this in your life. Wait on God. Don't get ahead of it. Wait on God. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to patiently wait for the way he's going to do it, and it'll be right. I don't know how to get it over to you anymore. It'll be right if God does it. But if you get ahead of him, then you're going to pay the price. God does not hate Ishmael. And he actually says the truth about him that is quite obvious. Are the Arabians wild men? He said he'll be a wild man. That's the prophecy of Ishmael. They, they are, buddy. I mean, they're different, man. They're, they like to fight, man. They're crazy. Okay? Maybe Sut was an Arabian. You reckon? You know, Sut could have put a turbine on with that beard he had, and he'd have trouble getting on an airport now, right now. <laughs> no. They, he says, Ishmael be a wild man. Gave him 12 tribes. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? You got 12 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Ishmael. But he said he hearkened unto Sarai, and he went into Hagar, and she conceived and bore a son. Okay? God didn't speak to him for 13 years. He was 86, and God didn't speak to him uh, until 99. 13 years, he just left him alone. Said, whatever. In 99, he told him to come again. He said, you're going to have a son. Said, well, I got one, Ishmael. Now he's trying to work it out. See? Don't try to work out things. You have. Again, I'm trying to get something over to you. Don't try to work it out. Let God work it out. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Let him direct thy paths. It's like prayer. Does God know what you're going to pray for you pray? Who's the greatest psychologist that you've ever known? What do you do when you go to a psychologist? You lay down and talk. You vent. Are you with me? You vent. And... When you come to a point and you say certain things, they said, well, we've come to a, a point here today, or what, what's, uh, what are the terminology is. We've come to a conclusion today. Why? Because you did the talking. It's vent. Prayer is venting. And the Heavenly Father is giving you peace by letting you talk to Him. You're venting. Folks, everything always works better after you talk. The problem with grace people, they won't talk to each other half the time. They hold it in. <laughs> I've had people leave and they'll never talk to me about the problem. Why don't you come and talk to me about the problem? Vent a little bit. Get it out. Talk about it. You 
feel better. That's a psychologist. He, you get big money. He gets big money for you to lay there and talk. You know who the greatest psychologist in the world is? God. You can talk to him. You can vent to him. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, as they might be saved, Paul said. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I serve the law of God, and with the flesh the law of sin and death. Oh, wretched man that I am, I'm miserable. I live in this vile body in an evil world <clears throat> with a spiritual man inside of me, always desiring to get out. The fleshly body don't want to get out. He's afraid. He wants to live. He, he'll manipulate and try to do whatever he can to live. And the spiritual man says, Lord, will you rapture us today? You know, people say, I don't know what I ought to say. Catch us out today. He might kill me or something. No, he ain't going to kill you. You're venting. You're venting to the Lord. And you're letting him calm your soul. By talking to him. Amen. Talking. Prayer. Okay. In Hebrews 11. By faith. Verse 17. By faith Abraham. When he was tried. Offer up Isaac. Alright. Now he's waited. For 13 years. The son is born. Do you think he's proud of Isaac? Folks, the reason I'm saying this, you have a dear sister who lost her only son. There's great tears, and we should have great mercy of her loss. And if we've never lost one, we have no idea what she's feeling. It's one thing to lose your parents, but it's another to lose your child. If you never have, you can't explain it. I can't. I got to preach the funeral. But that young man, I know a younger man that died in the Bible. And his name was Jesus Christ. And it was God's only son. But, you imagine Abraham loves Isaac? Oh, yeah. And what would you do one day? You got your only son. You've waited for him. It's it's a fulfillment of God's word. He's there with you. He's going to be. He's going to be the one that spreads the seed of Abraham. And God said, "I want you to take him up, and offer him up, kill him." Huh? You what? What? I mean, it doesn't say in the book that Abraham. Sat there and cried. I bet he did. Don't read just in hardness and say, boom, boom, boom. This is the way it works. I bet Abraham that night wondered, thought, maybe cried. Who knows how he felt. You want me to take him up and offer him up? But you know what he did? He did. And God is not a cruel God. The word is tried. Are you with me? Tried. He tried him. Do you really love me? Did I miss you folks? It's like God saying, do you really love me? And he tried it. I want you to watch something. Turn with me to 1 Peter. I'm sure Israel in, uh, in the stages of the horribleness that they faced in 2,000 years of people that hated, hated their nation and called them the scourge and the sin of the world and the problems of the world because they're Israel. I mean, you got to... Mussolini, you got the popes, you got Hitler. I mean, they just wanted to wipe out Israel because they were God's people. They're not God's people right now, but they're still God's people in the sense of he's not going to forget his promises at all. Okay? Now, what would happen if a 
thing came on that was so horrible on the world. And it was because it was to get at Israel. Wouldn't that be awful? Just the little people. And something's coming to get them. 1 Peter chapter 1. Was Abraham tried? Okay. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. The trial of your faith. Do you know what time it is that Peter's writing about? Let's see if we can find it. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Made a mighty fine wine. Now what? I mean, just think about something. How many of you here, you don't have to raise your hand, you don't even have to do anything, you don't have to do anything. How many of you mentally now think, are you saved? Do you know what you shall be saved from? The trial of your faith is every day. You have to believe the word, don't you? Don't you have to walk by faith, not by sight? So the trial of your faith is every day. Do I believe that book? Do I believe that what Paul wrote will take care of me? Okay? What if there was a time coming in your life when you would be tried by tribulation. The tribulation. That'd be horrible, wouldn't it? Did he shorten it to seven years, except if he hadn't shortened it, the very elect had been deceived? So it must be something horrible. You see, we're talking about the evil world we live in, but you know what you're going to do? You're going to leave here. You're going to get in your car. And you're going to drive home. And you're going to eat your bean. Then you're going to plan a vacation. And then you're going to figure out what kind of clothes you're going to wear this week. And you're going to have this and have that. But there's a time coming on the world when Israel has got to run for their lives. And their faith's going to be tried. Paul said, do all things without murmuring and disputing. I've got my feelings hurt. So, you're not in prison. You're not broke. Ain't nobody in this room broke. Here, are you broke? Mike, you broke? <laughs> You're also a liar. <laughs> Everyone has got a savings and a checking account, and you got a car. Most of in here probably got cars paid for. You got houses to live in. You got food to eat. You got your health. Harold just went through a trial and tribulation. Bless your soul, God brought him out of it. He still got his wife. Of course, she ain't here with him today. She's had enough of him. <laughs> Folks, do all things without murmuring and disputing. Because you're not in that trial of First Peter. Let's see what it is. In Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Will there ever be anything like tribulation? Okay. None is like it. It is even the time of whose trouble? Now, who's Jacob? For sure that that name is Israel, right? So this is Israel's trouble. When Jesus Christ was about to be put on the cross, Pilate won't let him go. No, we don't want him. The very creator of heaven or 
walked among them, did signs and wonders, if they would have believed and repented. I, it, folks, you've got to think about this. They've got their Savior with them. If I go back to the Old Testament, they were like a vineyard. And they were hedged about. Now you understand when Exodus 19, when he said, you're a peculiar treasure to me above all people of the earth. All they had to do was do what God said and nobody could have touched them. I mean, nobody could have bothered the littlest people and nobody could have touched them. Because God chose them. Next time the distress and the anxiety hits you, nobody can touch you. Your life is hid above. There ain't nobody can take your life. You have eternal life. He said, fear not him that can kill the body. Fear him that can kill the body, cast soul into hell. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter, Romans chapter 8. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, say it. Who can be against us? If he spared not his own son, shall he not with him also give us all things? You believe God lied? No. God said it. Let some peace come in your life in this mess. We're being afraid. Say, Lord, Brother Jerry, I, I don't know how to get away from here. You can't. Let the peace of God take care of you. One. So Jacob's trouble. But now, the curious thing about this verse in Jeremiah 30. Alas, for that day is great, so that there is none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved. Say it out loud. Well, what does that mean? He's in it. Yes. He's in it. Romans 5. This one, boy, I had a good die. I had a good thing laid out. This ain't it. Romans 5. How many of you in here, again, you don't have to raise your hand, you believe you're saved? Why do you believe you're saved? Because God said you are. That's what you got to believe, right? You hear the gospel to your salvation. Your salvation. Yours, not Israel. Your salvation. In whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Here it is. The Holy Spirit of promise sealed you. Okay? So, you are saved from dying. The gospel says Christ died for our sins. And I'm separating that for a reason. Christ died. Why did he die? He was made sin for us. What's the wage of sin? Death. He dies. When he dies, then what he's going to take care of is our sins. That's why Colossians says what it says. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. We don't have to wait until the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We don't have to wait for the second coming to have our sins blotted out. Acts 3 19, that's what Peter preached. Peter said, The trial of your faith. Go back and read just a minute. We are already forgiven. So somebody, not only did he die, but it was for our sins. You with me? He was buried. 
He left his body, body laid and rested in hope in a tomb above ground. His soul went into the heart of the earth, spent three days in hell. And then God in his mercy, his righteousness and kindness said, you can come up now, son, Mike's forgiven. You can come up, son, now Harold's forgiven. You can come up now, son, Leon's forgiven. How would Mike, Leon, and Harold ever know that? Please God, by the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. No one should ever die in vain. I want you to understand that. No one should ever die in vain. Preachers ought to preach to the living, not the dead. That's the way it should be. The gospel should always be revealed. For it's the power of God under salvation. All right, Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood that he shed that at Calvary. Would his blood be the redemptive power? Did his blood satisfy the righteousness of God? Was he tempted in all points like as we are yet knew no sin? Did he have an earthly or a heavenly father? He didn't have the nature of Adam. He has no sin. He did not succumb to the offering of sin. You think Adam and Eve faced the devil. Jesus faced the devil on the mount with three temptations. And succumbed to none of them. And he always said it's written. It is written. It is written. And you know what your answer is all the days of your living saved life? It is written. Gee, I, I hope God, I hope God can take care of that. What a dumb statement. Can he or can he not? Not, I hope. He has. He will. And he always will. Okay, now watch. Therefore, much uh I apologize. Much then now being much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath. How? Through him. Colossians 2. I've got a couple up in Cleveland that trusted the Lord recently. And they're on fire. I mean, literally, like you're on fire. I mean, pardon what I say to you, but sometimes you come in here going, oh, well, another day. <laughs> Let me sit down. And maybe we'll get a few words or whatever, and I'll go home and eat beans. They're on fire, man. They're wanting to do things. They're wanting to meet with people uh, in, the, in the class and fellowship together. People sometimes lose the right, want to fellowship. You know why you lost the right want of, the want of fellowship now? You're scared of something you can't see. It is not everywhere, but it's around. You can be careful. You can do whatever you want. Uh, comes to the vaccine, I don't care whether you take it or not. That's your business. That's your right. But don't force me. I ain't taking it. But that's my decision, and I have the right constitutionally to do that. If you take it, I ain't mad at you. That's fine with you. That's your choice. That's your freedom. It's when you say, I got to, we're going to fight. That's when the guns come out. No. I don't have to take anything I don't want. That's my God-given birth of American right. But you have the right to do it, too. Too many people are trying to take and force you to do anything they want you to do. And you know where that comes from. Colossians 2. I'm happy to be American. 
I'm happy to be free. I'm a patriot. I love living in this country. But I love the Lord more. You know why? He made me free. I don't have to dwell in this earth forever. I don't have to inherit this earth. I'm an heir of God and joint heir of Christ, and I have it written down. I have a life that's hid up there. Nobody can bother it. Satan can't get my life and mess it up. He can come after my fleshly life. But he can't mess up what God said. Watch Colossians 2.10. And you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So principality and power, they got no choice about this matter. He's the head. Okay. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When Christ left his body, the sins of the flesh of you and I are being taken away. He goes into hell, suffers torment, wrath, and everything else possible that could be poured out on him. I took it by faith, knowing that God the Father would forgive you. Are you listening? That God the Father would forgive you. That was His will. That was Jesus' will to get you forgiven. He gave Himself for our sins that He might deliver us from this present evil world. Galatians 1 3 and 4. The will of the Father. I got to give you this way. You're my only son. You're only 33 years old. You're in the prime of life. You're a good son. You're a perfect son. And I've got to give you to righteousness. Father, be thy will. Let this cup pass me. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Father. Into thy hands. I commend my spirit. And he died. They went through the act of killing him. But he died. For us. And when he died. He started the process. Of the sacrifice to God. A sweet smelling savor. That God accepted. And forgave us when he raised his son. The power of his resurrection is. That if you want it. You're forgiven. If you want it. You're adopted. If you want it. You're sealed. And nothing can separate you. From the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an amen? What do I hear? Do I hear an Amen. Colossians 2.12 Buried with him in baptism Not water But baptism of death Wherein also You are risen with him Through the faith the operation of God Who has raised him from the dead Oh my God I don't even have to worry about raised I'm already raised with him I don't have to worry about the process coming up Maybe I'll get to go out alive. Paul wanted to go out alive. He wasn't no. I mean, he's just a human being. He said, we went your life or me. Then later on, he said, well, I guess I'm not going to go out alive, but I'm, my departure is man. He got the ticket. No problem. My departure is at hand. He's going to be with the Lord. He's got a body waiting for him. He done wrote that in Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He knows that he won't be naked. He'll be up there in a new body asleep in the Lord. And he'll be awakened one day. Did you know that one day, it could be today, we might meet Paul in the air also. Wouldn't that be cool? The apostle that lived for the Lord. Me. To be with him. To be with the Lord. Say, what will we look like? That's up to God. What will we be like? That's up to God. But we'll hold in and blame before him in love right now. 
then what in the world would we be like there? And what would we see up there versus this temporal thing we see down here? A little old spot. If you was to put earth in the scheme of the universe, it would probably be what's under your fingernail. Size-wise. It's nothing. We live on a small planet in a massive thing that God created. And the city itself is like 1,200 miles square, I believe it is. But it's kind of like a pyramid. But it's 1,200 miles. That's a big sucker, ain't it? I bet you can see that if you ever drop down to heavens. What do you mean? Say, will it be dropping down over America? No, it ain't dropping over there in Eastern Europe, Jerusalem. Most likely that will be the pinpoint area that will drop down. Because the majority of your book is about that area. But you have 13 letters in this book that are directly to you that tell you all the things that God did for you. Well, well, isn't that amazing? Now, let's go to something and read. With all that said, James 2. Now, you got churches that are built on James. Okay. Number one, I think they forgot to read the verse, first verse of James chapter 1, but that's okay. You know. I heard a guy tell me the other day, he said, you know, some people get saved and then they, they stay for a little while. Then they go back to their church and he said, they're probably in some ways better than people that get saved and don't ever go to study or anything at all. No, no, no. You didn't read the scriptures. Mark them which cause division offenses are contrary to the point of so I just want to ask you a question. If you found the truth, you've been going in religion for many years, you never heard the gospel of your salvation. You never knew that Paul was your apostle. You never knew the gospel of Christ and you were shown it. Know where it's at in the Bible now. You didn't know that certain letters weren't yours. You found all this out and then you decided to go back into a church. What kind of fellowship could you have? And God said, what fellowship has light with darkness? You wouldn't be better off. But why would a person not even have fellowship or even study? I don't know. can't tell you. But they ought to want to. I've been in Panama City in four weeks and I'm about to die. I want fellowship with those people. I was raised with them. Just like I was raised with you. I was raised with the people in Arkansas. I ain't been to Arkansas in two months. I'm fixing to go. Why? Because of the situation around us. What's going on? That's what the God's world wants. He wants us to stop. He wants us to go inside and just lay down and die. Yes. Just stop. Go inside and lay down and die. <laughs> that ain't what God wants. James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to who? Who? Now, the 12 tribes are the tribes of Jacob. Is he the promised seed? Not Ishmael. Is Jacob Israel? So we got the 12 tribes. Okay, with that in mind, turn to James, where you're at, in James chapter 2. Did I read in Peter that they would be a trial of their faith? Did I read that Abraham was tried and he offered up what God gave him? And he literally, the Bible says, he literally had the boy tied and the knife up and God said, that's enough. God wasn't ever going to let him kill him. He said, look over there. Oh my, there's a ram in the bush. And God took the ram, or uh, Abraham took the ram, killed it. He didn't kill Isaac. You ever think about how Abraham felt that day? Come on, folks. Do you understand how Abraham must have felt after that? I heard Harold say, 
I almost lost my wife, and now I got her back. Abraham, thank you. Don't lose your joy. Don't you remember a day when you trusted the Lord? And you went, I got the wrong tape. I've already been crucified, Brother Jerry. Not only can you be saved, why don't you treat it your life like you are? Now watch. James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? Wait a minute. Justification in Paul's letters are already done by the offering up of another son. You see, grace, God does it. In tribulation, the believers do it. That's the difference between by and through. By faith, they'll have to do what they're told to do. And they'll have to endure it and then get saved out of it. Through faith, Jesus went through it all for us, and we walk by his faith. Are you, are you with me? And we don't have to go through it, because we've already been delivered with him. We've already been redeemed. The redemption is through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins, I'll never go before the Lord and have to answer for my sins. I answer for walking in His good works. Ephesians 2.10 For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which He hath ordained that we should walk in them. I walk in His good works. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. He's resurrected. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's given God the glory. That's given Son the glory of what he did for us. And we are the walking witness of his resurrection. His resurrection means that we're redeemed, forgiven, justified, and glorified. And our life is hid right up there with him, just waiting for the day when either God tells you the end of your life has come or it's time to come up alive because we don't have to die. We can go out alive. Only promise to the body, the body of Christ. Amen. I appreciate you being here.